Okay, so today I'm taking a forward horse that's a little barn sour uh, down the road. So when you're trying to figure out how to do things and you're working on several things at the same time, if I need to get arena work done but the horse is a little barn sour and I need to get trail mileage, I'm going to do the trail mileage on him first. Now, you'll see he's looking at the bee guys over there. We have bee boxes. And he's a little scared. Well, a couple of reasons why. He's not used to going out by himself, so that's normal. Um, he hasn't seen bee um, outfits before where they're hooded. He can't tell their people. You know, so he's just not used to it. So I'm not going to look at it now. But I will when I come back, when I uh, wear a little bit of his energy off. Okay? So, first we're seeing, well, will you just leave the barn by yourself? He stopped a little bit right there, but not too bad. That's his friend screaming like, where are you going? Don't leave me. He's like, see you later. There's too much work at the barn. Okay, so we went out fine. And uh, he's not charging down the trailer trying to run with me, so that's good. So I'm going to let him walk for a little bit, and then we'll turn you back on. Okay, so hear him snorting. He's just scared, that's all, and that's normal. He's never been here before. It's different if he had been ridden on the trail a lot before he came to me, but he wasn't, so this is not unexpected. So if they're snorting, their heads up, and they're scared, and you're scared, just get off and walk. You do not need to be on their back, no matter how many times people say tell you that you don't. You can be on the ground, you just gotta be able to handle them on the ground, but you did your groundwork, right? So it shouldn't be a problem. All right, so if they're snorty, high-headed, keep your body relaxed and uh, keep their head down. If their head's down, it's going to give you more control and uh, keep breathing. Uh, I'm breathing right now because I'm talking, right? Okay, and then I'm going to give him a little job to do. So I'm giving him my little leg yield. He has to do that anyhow to occupy his mind some. So now even though he's snorting, his head's down. And he's much more relaxed. He's like, oh, oh my god, I didn't die yet. I think I'm okay. So we're going to go down the road. We'll see what we see. Probably not that much. And then I'm going to give him a break up there away from the barn. We're going to graze him. Because um, it's a good time for the grass. And he needs that for his nutrition. And I'm grazing away from the barn to make going away a good thing. And a reason why. Remember, they walk 30 miles to get food. So... Walking a mile or two to get some food isn't hard at all. Okay, so, but he seems pretty good. I can't totally let go of the reins yet without his head. Well, I lied. His head did stay down for a minute. A fast minute. Um, but then it came back up. But this is his first time going down the road, so you can probably see the reins down there. Um, I'm just going to pull, let go, pull, let go. We're all by ourselves. But I'm not hanging on him. You got to keep yourself relaxed. And I go eat horse like this. No leg. You just sit, sit and relax. Give him jobs to do. Okay. Take, let go. Take, let go. Do not hang on. Do not tense up. Do not cringe. So if you want a forward or a goey horse, you got to be a relaxed person. If you're uh, someone who's uh, very active, always moving around in the saddle, fidgety. A hot horse is not for you because you're going to drive them insane with all that motion. You need to just be calm and relaxed. Okay? All right. Turn you back on a little He's bit. doing good. So I'm going to practice his gait a little bit. And I want to practice that going away from the barn because I know he's probably going to try and get fast coming back towards the barn. So he's got a nice flat walk. Depends where you want their head. A lot of the walking horse people uh, want it a little up some, not sky high, just so they get more of that head shake. If you don't like as much head shake, then if you bring it down a little bit more, you'll still have head shake, but it won't be extreme, so you won't be moving around in the saddle as much. Okay? So any horse that has a lot, a lot of um, motion in the saddle, they usually have a lot of head shake. So the less you get of that head shake, the less you'll move around. Okay? You like the head shake then you're going to get a lot of motion in the saddle most likely okay here's his gait one two three four one two three four i 
I want to tad it down a little bit, not so much for his gait, but for his uh, anxiety. Listen to the rhythm. Very sped up. I gave a half halt slow down, that's all, and no leg. Listen that football. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's a little high, but there's llamas on the right. Sometimes they're out, sometimes they're not, but they can smell them. So I'm just trying to get his head back down. With him, when they're really not paying attention, I'll alternate, alternate my hands, like left, right, left, right, to slide that bit across their tongue, kind of massage their tongue, get their brain back into their head. <laughs> okay, there's the bee boxes. So sometimes they hear those and get a little freaked out. He's ignoring it, so that's just fine. Okay. Okay, so he's behind me. Um, so he's eating grass and he turned around and decided he didn't want to be there anymore. So remember, that's okay. They got to make decisions and find out what happened. So I'm going to get up here right from the cars in case the car does a crazy thing. I'm going to get back on, ride home, serpentine leg yield, go back to the barn and do some not so fun stuff. Let him see what his decision does for you, right? So this is the horse that was forward. And what I'm going to do is my reins are short enough because I can tell he's not just going to walk on a totally loose rein with his head down. You can just feel it. And uh, the car coming. So you're getting a little antsy with the car, but not too bad. And uh, it's good. He gets to go by other trucks and stuff. Now he's getting a little faster. So now I'm going to give him a job to do. It's okay. He did good for the first, like, minute. Then he got overly excited. Okay? Just remember when you're at a new job, you might be... He might do well for a minute and then you really screw something up and you're like, oop, didn't mean to touch that button. So they do the same thing. Okay. So I'm just giving him something to do with his mind and that's work on our serpentine. And then you'll see now that he got faster and a little antsy, his gate's not as clear for beat. That's the least of my problem. So we don't worry about the gate. We worry about their uh attitude, their anxiety first, how calm you got them, and then you get the gate after. If you try to work on the gate now, you can't, you can't work on it all at the same time, okay? So it might come as he relaxes more, but I don't, I don't worry about that. So you just breathe, relax, you keep just going back and forth, breathing. So remember, deep breath through your mouth. Because through your nose, it does not work. They don't feel it as much. No. Now again, with some horses, if they're forward and you stop them and they want to go, they'll rear up. So you got to remember that people go, well, just stop them. Uh, you got you got to feel what you got in the saddle. So you know, it's kind of like your car. You know what you can do with your car. So some horses you could stop back up if you're alone or they're relaxed enough, but if they're really tense, they want to go and you stop them, they're either going to go sideways, backwards, or up in the air because they want to move their feet. Okay? So it's better just practice your leg yielding and your serpentines. And then when you get back to the barn, you of course could circle there and work on it and then you'll be able to do it better out here. So now. His head's down, so he's more relaxed, but if I let go of the reins, there he goes speeding up. So I'm like, no, sorry, can't do that. So I'm just keep half halting. Do not hang on them. Just half halt, breathe. 
I fault free that they're really bad you can kind of slide that bit do it you know if they're not paying attention at all do it a little bit hard for a couple of seconds like you see who when I'm um, working with the barn shower horses kind of bump them and but then let go don't just keep bumping them the whole time or they're just going to ignore you okay all right every time the, another truck went by I had to go way on the side of the road he gets antsy with that so he got amped up so I'm going to make my serpentines a little harder And you give and take, otherwise they'll just pull your arms out of the socket. Remember, they're a thousand pounds. So, if you just hang, they just pull. That's why they pull logs so well. And if I just drop the reins, he's most likely just going to speed up and up. See? That's how you know they're barns now. Because <laughs> the forward part going out is pretty good. So, I can't have him running down this road. We'll, we'll make sparks. So I just keep serpentining and it can be quite annoying in the beginning. You're like, oh my god, when's this going to stop? It will. If you do it right, it'll, it, it, it'll stop. But you got to keep working on it. This is not once a week working on it or it will take you a long time. This is a, you know, five days a week. Get it in their brain that, hey, going home is not fun for you. So. Uh, we came back, we did the round pen work, then I got on to ride him around the barn. He wanted to head towards his stall, so that's where I am. Because again, I'm trying to let him, he's showing me he's got a problem, so I can avoid it, and it'll never get better. Or I can keep working on it. So he brought me over here, so I'm just doing the turn on the haunches, because that needs to be really good. You know, now we're a little dizzy, so how about let's go the other way. And here's his, let's do it by your new friend. Here's his new friend, because his new friend has a little bit of that problem too. So, he might as well see what's going to happen if he does the same thing. So, this horse doesn't move off the right leg as well. So, I'll make this better. Hey, you got to be careful they don't bite your foot or something. Right? Because they're just reacting. I'm just trying to show them this is not the right answer. Too bad you can't do this with people, right? You're like, hmm, that's not a good guy. Shouldn't go out with him. <laughs> or she's not so nice. Every All your friends hate her, <laughs> right? So, but people don't listen. Neither do horses. So there's one way to learn is by showing them. You can't usually show your friends, but you can show horses. All right. So uh, now let's try side passing here and oh look. He's not rearing up so much, but we'll see when he goes this way because this is the hard direction. Come on, I want I want to go in your stall. Why don't you want to go in your stall? He's like, I don't want to go in there anymore. I do. So he kind of shut down like I'm not doing it. How about that? So now there's another horse over here, but we don't care. We just keep doing our work, no matter what. No matter what's going on in the arena. Scaring the other horses. That's good, he's shutting down, but he's, he's not rearing up. So where would you like to go now? I wouldn't go that way. You want to go back in your stall? He's like, no. Okay, now I'm going to leave him alone. If he heads towards his friend right there, we're going to bump him. He's like, holy crap. You said she was nuts. She is nuts. Oh, I'm tempted. I'm going to do it. I'm going towards my friend. So I'm going to bump him in the mouth. I keep putting leg on him so he keeps moving because he'll, he'll just stand there and shut down. So this is the right direction. This is away from your friends. But you can't let them graze here. Don't let them graze by their friends. Anywhere, let them graze out there. Okay, so we read the right move. We'll see what else he now, does. Because now we're heading towards the out gate again. So, 
what I'm doing now is walking around the barn making circles when he goes the wrong way when he heads towards his friends um, or tries to shortcut where I want to go or you know tries to cut through the arena to go to his friends or something I'm bumping him in the mouth I'm just fine that bit but a little bit rough to show him it's not pleasant and then when he goes the right way I leave him alone and I try to get his head down so he um, made a mistake but then figured it out now he's nervous he's watching that guy again yep. you can watch the guy so the guy's not scary um, so I'm giving him a break while he's watching that guy which is fine and then uh, we're going to go down here again and we'll see if he tries to head towards his barn again. So um, even though he made the right decision after I showed him, he made the wrong decision to start when we were um, down by the arena. So what I'm trying to say is, did, did you really get it? Because most of the time it's a guess. They're like, I guess I'll go this way, see what happens then. So he's a little fast, so I'm just, you can see the bid. I'm bumping them, um, you know, and you, they'll open their mouth and stuff. you got to have enough bit to help you. And in time, you won't have to put as much pressure on it. So that goes back to the barn. I don't, he's not trying to go left. He's just trying to go fast. So I might make circles again if we need to. That, you know, I'm going to make a circle. So again, they're usually better one direction than the other. He's not so good to the right. So I'm going to circle to the right, and then that gets all my circles to the right better he sped up just sit back because when you're making these circles and the ground's uneven you know some of these guys can be trippy so I'm getting his head down he sped up so this is just I think it's your second week kind of to look so that's not very long it usually takes like a month so he's not bad now his head's down he went right by the opening of the gate which went back towards the stall so even though I have contact, I'm seeing which direction he's going. He started going the wrong way, so I kind of bumped him. Now he's turning the right direction. Good job, buddy. Good boy. So he made the right decision, but he did veer off to the left again. So I'm going to go around the barn and try it again, because I want to make sure he's, he's sure on that decision. So now we're heading back towards the arena. He's still a little speedy, so I did a little serpentine instead of the circle that time. Oh boy, good job, he's better. So now I'm right by the gate, in case he wants to run in there, he can. Battery sign. So he didn't run in there, that's good. Now, so when I'm testing, I'm like this, like, I'm going to look to the right, like, that's the way I want to go, horse. But if you want to go left, you can go left, and I'll just show you what happens. So he's speeding up. He made the wrong decision. Look. See how all of a sudden he made a run for it? So he said, I don't believe you, lady. I don't think you're going to catch me. Hmm. See how slow he's walking now? So, we would have ended it there, but no, he told me he wasn't ready, so we're just going to try it again. Hopefully the battery will come back on. So I cut over here, because I want to get over here again, see if he makes the wrong decision again. So same thing, I'm not going to steer, I'm going to look to the right. That's the way I want to go, but I'm not using any leg or anything else. And guess what? He just made the right decision. He didn't try to run that way at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him up to the top of the hill to reward him for his decision. And I'm going to let him graze outside the barn. And then, because my battery's done, I'm just telling you all this. And then I'm going to come back in and I am going to tie him up. And he's going to be tied up by his friends for a while to make that not such a fun thing. So. Again, you might feel bad doing this, but if you don't, you know, this happened for a reason because somebody spoiled them or didn't ride them or fed them too much, so we did it, so it's up to us to get them better again. And so you, you might have to do some things that you think are mean 
you know. But in the end, they're not because it'll make a better horse. Nobody wants a barn sour horse. They won't buy one. You ever see for sale barn sour horse? Ten thousand dollars. Nobody's gonna buy that. So <laughs> that's like I say, for sale, not on sale. I know what I got. That video cracks me up. So um, you, you gotta sometimes do some things you don't like to do to make these horses better. But again, we did the wrong thing, and he's afraid of this guy. So I'm gonna go up here and graze him by it. Why not? Get him used to it. Okay. So make them better. Okay, don't make them worse. If people spoil them and that's how they get worse and they think all these things are mean. But again, what you're doing is just making a dangerous horse by not getting after them and giving them bad habits. You know, I've seen horses running people over because they're barn sour or stall sour or buddy sour. And that's because those people are uh, not fixing it and the horse is just over and over again learning to be bad and dangerous. Right? And, that, and then the horse gets put down. So. Right? Um, you know, if it runs over a person or something, they probably are going to put it down. So just think, letting them, uh, getting after them or tying them up for an hour or so is uh, not so bad when your other option is um, being put down. Okay? So you got to be 